Uh, Mr. Rosendahl, uh, followed by Mr. Zein. Mr. Rosendahl? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, it's okay. Uh, I don't know if the cameras can find me over here, but I'm sitting in Mr. Alicon's seat. There's somebody up there on a switchboard, so they can see that. All right, they haven't figured, there they got me now. Okay, uh, Madam Chair, thank you for, for recognizing me. I totally agree with you folks. Let me tell you, just from the heart, I was a cable guy for 22 years. I supported public access. I considered it the electronic soapbox and the First Amendment rights. A lot of cable people didn't like it because they didn't see a buck being made at it. I saw a buck being made because it distinguished us from the satellite, it was a unique product. Plus, more importantly, the people own the airwaves, you know? Not the broadcasters or the cable casters. But that's all been gone because special interests manipulate the process. The broadcasters were able to take away that fairness doctrine in Washington. That's why the only way the democracy works now is 30 second sound bite news junkie garbage that you have to represent your candidates. It's terrible. They should open up those airwaves during an election process for people to participate within it and learn. Same thing with public access. The people own those airwaves. Well, we know what happened. Sacramento cut the deal with the phone company who didn't want to go through this franchising process, didn't want to help be accountable by local government on customer service or public access. So the cable industry did the same thing. Me too, me too. So they all got what they wanted at the expense of the people. It is a terrible day when the new year begins that public access is pretty much destroyed. My only suggestion is that Channel 36 somehow, since we control that placement, get involved in public access, a block of time would go to public access, and that 1% money should somehow be put in a way in which we can have at least one studio, if not more, where public access producers can do it. I might also say personally, I had 700 public access producers who produced 3,500 shows. And I am as upset as you are that once again, the strangulation of the political process has happened and we're all in trouble because public access is almost now finished. Thank you very much, Mr. Zein, followed by Mr. LaBanche. Thank you, uh, well stated, Bill Rosendahl, who uh, many of us appeared on your program on the west side for many years, and uh, Ms. Dutton, on full disclosure, I've been a guest along with many of my colleagues. I think that the, uh, the FCC, the federal government, they took away the editorials. We used to have editorials on television radio stations, and we've seen how the news has changed. Unless you have cable, you're really not gonna get much. You may have some local news, but basically, you're gonna have to have a cable and pay for the cable operation to have that. If you have DISH or something else, you're not getting the local Channel 35, uh, the, the broadcast here in City Council. So I see it eroding. And I know that there was a strong lobby, a lot of commercials, support this, support that. And we see what's happening with the cable industry. I totally support the full disclosure as well as the public access. And the Time Warner devotes a lot of time to public access. They now control this region and they're very generous with that but it's an erosion of the process from the editorials that used to be around. No one has editorials anymore. The news operations and the radio stations have been dwindling, some non-existing. The stations that are now buying up other stations where you have the same news team on both channels, uh, it's an erosion of that and the information is now being reduced. So whatever we can do, I will be supporting that. I'm sure Mr. Rosenau will lead that charge, but you have a very valid point and if we look at what's happening, it's continuing to float away. And I want to commend you on your program on full disclosure and the fact that you received an Emmy. I know that you had a, a large uh, brunch Sunday. And by the time I got there, it was over. Nevertheless, do support what you're doing. And I was unaware that this was taking place at this great momentum. So I'm sure many of us will support whatever we can do to save it. But the state's taking it, the Fed's taking it, and they're really walking on over the local agencies and the local jurisdictions. So I do support you, along with my colleague, Bill Rosendahl. But he will be the champion in this chamber, because anytime it comes to free access, public access, Bill's at the lead of that. So thank you for being here, and thank you for bringing this to our attention. Mr. Labanch. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Zion, I know you're one of our leaders on the League of California Cities. Is this? Uh, conference in Long Beach going to have any opportunity to discuss uh, something like this? On the board, along with uh, Councilmember Gruel and Councilmember uh, Cardenas, 
um, the three of us are on, on that board, I will be bringing that up at our board meeting because it's going to affect not only Los Angeles but every other jurisdiction. Many, many public access programs produce and people enjoy them. So I will be bringing that up at the conference in Long Beach, California League of Cities. And we also, with National League of Cities coming up before the end of the year, we may want to bring it up at the National League of Cities. But it's, there's no question it's being eroded and being washed away. Well, I, I think we certainly should bring it up. I remember uh, as a child watching television and they'd have a PSA at the end of the uh, Highway Patrol and Broderick Crawford would say, leave your bread at the Red Cross, not on the highway, right. slow down. And other things uh, that would impact uh, a someone, Broderick said it with much more vim and vigor uh, than I said it. 2150 to headquarters. That's right. But I think this is so important what you bring up, because uh, what we see now is the, what is called the fourth estate, which is the press eroding. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to see that the Los Angeles Times is not the paper that it once was, uh, which is an important aspect. I'm sorry to see that the Daily News uh, has challenges in the industry of the newspaper uh, that is there. I'm just talking about our two local papers. Our community papers are thriving because people want community news. Uh, community news often comes from local access television shows. So, Dennis, if you would, as you do so many times, because I know you serve nationally uh, on the issues of homelessness and other issues uh, with the National League of Cities, uh, you're very committed. Would you look at this issue, uh, along with Mr. Cardinals, Ms. Gruel, and try to come up with some solution? And maybe, Mr. Miller, if you could put that in the back of your mind, that we could try to find some solution. They use our right-of-ways to put up some of their systems. Right. Uh, there's got to be a way we should stand in, in, in front of this because it is an important component, especially with t today's technology. I think I grew up, there were five or six, there were, KCET wasn't around then. Uh, there were five television stations, that's all. Now there's 5,000 if you want them, why can't we have one for public access? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. LaBonge. Ms. Uh, Ms. Gruel, can I just say, Ms. Hahn just said something to me that I thought was boring. I said there's over 5,000 TV channels uh, in the satellite world that we live in now. Why can't we just have one for public access? Thank you uh, very much, Mr. LeBonge. That item is now before us. Uh, Madam Clerk, please open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the votes. 12 ayes.